What's good, y'all? Del Will here. Um, back at it again. Um, I'm recording this on. I don't know. Actually, I don't know when you're gonna see this. Whenever I post it, but yeah, back at it again. And uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and follow me on Instagram at Bell World. And yeah, hope you enjoyed the video. All right, so here we go. I blackmailed the CEO of American Girl Dog. When I was around 10, this new dog came out from American Girl. I asked my mom if I could have the dog. When she saw it was nearly $100, she told me no. So she said it was criminal of American Girl to charge those prices for a dog. I was a very literal child who had unsupervised access to the computer and the internet. I managed to get the email for the CEO of that company. I proceeded to the email to email them. My mom said your dog prices are criminal. If you don't send me one, I'm telling the police. For the next couple of days, I would check the email box multiple times a day. When my mom asked me why I would tell her I'm waiting on my dog. Um, she would remind me she didn't order the dog, to which I would say, I know. A few days later, I re revived an email from the CEO. It basically said that there are a lot of little girls out there that can't afford the dog. And if I really wanted it, I could do some chores around the house to earn money. I was furious. I started screaming. Mom called the police at the top of my lungs. My mom ran to in the room terrified I was dying. I explained to her that the American girl dog broke the law and and wouldn't send me my free dog and we needed to tell the police. She took away my unsupervised access to the internet and moved the computer to her room. I never got my dog. Ooh wee. A uh, girl yelled at me because of my hair. A girl yelled at me because I'm blonde and I have lighter hair in the front that looks like the highlights. And she heard me say, I've never dyed my hair. She reamed me out for lying at lunch for like 15 minutes. Holiday hurdle day two. Sweet sigh of relief. Oh, how I have missed you, my lavatory. Lavatory? I think that's how you said. I must say, your floor tiles are so much more soothing than those tiny, psychedelic, and anxiety inducing ones at the campsite. The longer I stared at those, the more they appeared to stare back at my soul. Changing the very makeup of the chemicals in my brain. Yes, the blissful scarcity of footsteps and strangers. Bar, bar those of my loving daughter who feels the need to ask me questions while I am mid. Dare I say, shoot, why does this child feel the need to speak to me in such a private moment? I feel that a um, question will never be answered is having a child a forever agreement to share toilet the time i don't know i may never know i have to live with that now the dogs wish to hover about my toilet door what i what have i done to deserve such intrusion 
I hear them sniffing at the bottom of the door. They're sick. I I silently plead with them to leave me alone. I'm trying not to break concentration. Please leave. You weird toilet sniffing freaks. I beg in my subconscious. I hear them pacing outside my toilet door. I am beginning to feel like I did it at the campsite toilets. Is this just my life now? Destined to forever share this private moment. I fear it is so, but I cannot accept it. I spiral into denial as I flush and leave the toilet wrestling with a cold hard truth. I will never doodle alone again. Dental freezing equals no taste. Okay, so I'm actually experiencing this as if I'm writing this post on my phone story. So bear with me. You know when you go to the dentist and get your fillings and and to do that they have to numb your jaw with this freezing liquid. Well, they tell you that you can eat and drink no problem after. At least mine did. But they don't tell you whether or not you'll be able to taste any of it. So, so I went through all the trouble of making the best hot chocolate and ramen noodles as a reward after my bravery. And I can't taste it with three-fourths of my tongue. So bear, so bury all ye who desire food fillings. Make bland. You won't taste it anyway. Sad, but that's, that's low-key true. Uh, next one is called instant karma because all of a literal food baby. I tried to be sneaky and bring food into the movie theater by using shorts, an extra skirt, a tight dress, a, a skirt, and oh, I said, oh, the first one was shirt, skirt, and a one shoulder shawl. The food bag went into the shorts with the tight dress supporting it, hugging it close to my, close to, what? My body? You mean my body? The extra shirt was used as a barrier between my skin and the hot food bag. The skirt was loose and hung off the baby bump. While the one shoulder shawl was long enough to cover the top half of the belly, I had smooshed uh, and shaped the bag into a round enough shape. It was pretty believable. What really sold it was my was my I've been I've had enough of this acting. My friend said I was scary. Good at it. Also, side note, I looked in the mirror and was horrified to see myself like like that. L M L M A O. I don't want kids, so it was trippy. Any... How? Anyway? Man, these people cannot type. This is where the karma, the instant karma comes into play. We were all set, waiting for the movie room to be clean. So we can take our seats. Then my friend and I realized my phone was not with us. After checking the car, we called the food place to see if they had it. We hoped they could hold it for us and we could come get it after the movie. We called five times. When someone finally answered the phone, they said it was not there and that no one's turned in anything. The movie was starting. By the time we drove to the food place, the movie was about eight and ten minutes in. My friend went inside and asked if it were was there they said no again my friend looked inside for my phone while i tried to locate mine and with theirs eventually we found out someone turned in the phone and the worker we spoke to didn't know 
We missed the beginning of the movie and we're still 8 to 10 minutes away. We ended up not going and eating the food in the parking lot while watching a show on my phone. Tried to be sneaky and got instant karma. This story is called My First Vegetarian Grandpa. So my grandpa who served in Afghanistan for four years is the funniest guy. Every time we walk into his house, he will grab his musket from his room and reenact the battlefield. Uh, convoys, convoys, usually go like this. Back in Afghanistan, babble of the French nonsense. I nagged this British boy musket to the head. Wow, Gramps, real cool. Did I tell you about the sign that I killed a British boy? Um, and the cycle repeats this way for an hour. With Will, Willis, he, Willis, he continue, continuously dances like a person who just found out he's won the lottery. Just older. Thanks for reading. You're welcome, bro.